Morgan, my friends. <laughs> Welcome to Tartarcast. <laughs> yes. Um, we're yeah, gonna, no, we're, yeah. Yeah. We're going to see, uh, uh, we're going to be talking about secret sauce and recipes. <laughs> secret sauce. That's what's in the article. It's the thing that this goes. This person must have been hungry when they were. It's the thing that it. goes on your Big Mac, gets on your Chick fil A sandwich. It's. All, uh, all, all Big Mac sauce is, is Thousand Island and ketchup. Yeah. Pretty much Big with Mac. with like uh, it looks like it has like pickles ground up in there. Or something. Yeah, and who knows what else they put in it? Yeah, who knows? McDonald's. I, McDo- I was McDonald's in- is like if I'm gonna go bad, if that's like my go to. Really? McDonald's is. I haven't ate a McDonald's in I don't know when, let me, but let me it's think. been months. That's but I do occasionally will partake, and I will go. I crave like uh, if I'm gonna be like super depressed, and I'm. Not feeling good for the day. Oh, that'll probably help it. Yeah, it helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll like put all the shades, make them really dark, go get McDonald's, and then watch horror movies. I, one after the other. It, <laughs> and it cures it. You have a problem. You no, have a, we're fine, bro. You have a deep-rooted... <laughs> we are fine. Yeah. So we're fine here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not deep-rooted. <laughs> Since I've been a child. Uh, uh, klein, a, klein a problem. Tiny. Just a little bit. Yeah. Why do you think I'm single, bro? Uh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's all the horror films of McDonald's. <laughs> yes. I um, I love wasting time here on this podcast. Um, If I... You know, this is an interesting behavior, and we'll segue. Yes. Um, If I'm going to choose something, it's, it's, it's Domino's Pizza. Yeah, I like Domino's Pizza. It's I, pretty good, yeah. No, but like, I'm like, if I want it, I'm like, <laughs> you can send over a Do couple Do they make like a vegan one? Uh, I just get it without the cheese and the butter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty much just getting bread with a bunch of stuff on it. Yeah, but you can get, sauce. you could get like all, they have tons of vegetables. Well, here's what I do. They have the little Domino's tracker on the phone. I, I'll i get the pizza and I have my own cheese, my vegan cheese at the house. Oh, so just put it. them on there? Put it back in the oven. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah see? I have them do all the real leg work and I'm essentially just heating it up. Yeah, I, I like the vegan pizza. Uh, we have a vegan pizza place in the mountains. Oh, Trail Rider. Yeah. The place is unreal. Yeah, so they have some pretty amazing food there. Yeah. I love it, but... Um, Can we talk about something? Well, about? yeah, you're you're talking about... I'm a fat kid, bro, so... <laughs> so am I. <laughs> when, whenever it comes to food, bro, I'm in. You never know. Especially if it's not... I'm a I was bean. raised. I was raised in, in the South. Yeah. Where we... It was like a privilege to eat fast food. And, like, my dad loved fast food. My mom ate it. And then at home, everything was, like, junk cereals. And then my mom was always making cakes. Wow. So I just constantly ate peanut butter jelly. I'd love to see you as a little butterball. It was, like, all sugar all I'd the time. I'd love to see you as a little butterball. <laughs> Luckily, I was active enough. You know, I, you know, like, I played. I, I was thin, actually. I looked like you. I, weighed a, I was 6'2". I never, two. Let me tell you, I didn't always look like this. I was 6'2 at 12. Yeah, you and I are about the same then. And then, um, and then uh, I I stopped at twelve years old. I didn't grow anymore. I didn't. I got another you three got, inches yeah, all just, the way up to eighteen. And then, <laughs> um, but I weighed one hundred and seventy at six two, mm. all through junior high and high school. And, and so I never. I think because I was just so busy, I just burned the sugar out. But it was yeah. just. But now I'm having to eat like super healthy just to counteract probably all the chaos. You Thirty did in years. Your past. Of, yes, all the. Kairos. <laughs> yeah. All the moments. <laughs> yeah. So what do we, uh, we, uh, this person got really heated in this Barron's article. Like that's yes. probably about as heated as a journalist would get in an article. Especially at a Barron's article. Yeah. This is Because this is, the Barron's is usually pretty uh, conservative. Um, this is about big data bias. And then. We oh, never to, heard of it, Jason. Yeah. We need to see the recipe, he says. So there's big she. problems. I think it's a she. Uh, there's big data, big problems with privacy and bias. Yeah, let me make sure I'm not. You got me thinking There'll about it. There'll be some food. sort of chauvinistic pig. Figure it out. Yes, research professor, cross disciplinary fellow, and director of the Digital Trade and Data Governance Hub at George Washington University, Susan Ariel Aronson. Here we go, Susan Aronson. Yes. So Sa. Yeah, so that's me automatically assuming it was a dude. Yeah, it yeah. Was, I'm thinking Barons, you know, so I was thinking of yeah, like big cigar, Wall Street guys. You know, he's got his like smoking, tuxedo, yeah. you know, penguin suit on. <laughs> um so We're making billions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep squeezing the people dry. <laughs> They're our free labor. So how does this thing kick off here? American policy and economy. Mm-hmm. Um, they talk about when they talk, when they're talking about big data analytics and they're talking about 
the economy and how it's not understand. And we can see this. I mean, we'll get into the article in a second, but when you speak to this, we can see this with how far behind the times the government, I always laugh because people always say conspiracy theories and they're talking about this. I was in the military and just some of the missions that we were doing, it was just so, and some of this was high level stuff. Yeah. It was so unorganized. <laughs> I mean, just to be able to, just to have cross agency people speaking to each other yeah. is such an issue because there's so many big silos. So to keep like 30 or 40,000 people quiet over something with different departments and different agencies and to coordinate something nefarious, yeah. never, I know that will never happen in the government. No, <laughs> they're but, too incompetent. No, the people don't understand is that they think it's the government. It was people that were in the government that left the government yes. to create their own businesses that yes. don't operate under the government umbrella anymore. Yes, there's those guys. <laughs> they do whatever. It's, the, it's here's government, and then these people that do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. So, whenever we look at American policy and we see data right now, they're just trying to react. It's completely reactive, you know, and. There's so much, uh, they, you know, with the big data, it's it's really about predictions. That's all the world is built on right now is predictions. How well can we predict? But they're using historical data and old lagging behaviors and all this other, you know, third-party observational stuff about who you are. It's just like this bucket that they peel together online and just assume that here's a profile of Jason. We've said this a million times before. Okay, it's just bad predictions. Yes. Over and over and over. And, you know, government is looking at it from a policy standpoint, and they're still lagging in this factor. Mm -hmm. There's no reason you wouldn't know ahead of time who's everyone, who everyone is going to decide for who's going to be the president. You would know it before the vote comes in. It's ridiculous. It's yeah, it's, it, this is funny. You know, it's like uh, I live in an apartment complex. So serving me an ad, this happened yesterday, serving me an ad to get my air conditioning unit fixed is a waste of time. So uh, this company, local company that is doing this, yeah. whoever did your ad for you, they should have took the apartment complexes off. They yep. can do that. What'd you lose? Like so, so you're just losing money. Three grand a month for a small business, <laughs> yeah. you know, sending stuff to people that don't even you have can, responsibility for yeah, it. Yeah, you can, you can target uh, people that own a home. But what happened was they went to some online company to buy a mailing list. Yeah. And... There was no sort of curating to be like, well, are these are is it this apartment complex? Yeah. Are the people responsible for it? They have no idea unless you go to the person at the apartment complex and ask them. Yeah, exactly. Am yeah, I there's wrong? A, yeah, there's no the, they don't know. Do you need air conditioning services? No. No. When I walk through Costco, okay, and they hammer me and they're like, Do you want solar panels on your house? I'm like, I am not responsible for the domicile that I live in. Yes, exactly. It's not my liability. Yeah, no, no. I'm a renter. Yes, exactly. None. So whenever we look at the big data analytical process, he, and he uses these words, and I love it. She. Um, I mean, she. I'm, gosh. You're okay. she, you are chauvinist. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call me out, bro. <laughs> Keep going. Divisive, discriminatory. These are all me. Divisive, <laughs> discriminatory. <laughs> <laughs> Inequitable and dangerous outcomes. Now we know why you're single. Arms. Now yes. we know why you're single. Exactly. Some of the people sort into groups that needs to change. So big data analytics often requires a huge supply of anonymized. Was, right before we get to the anonymized part, sort people into groups. Right. Why are you sorting me into a group? Why can't I tell you what group I want to go in? Yes, exactly. Can we think about just that? I don't right like. There. I, I automatically think of like bad things when government starts sorting you. You need to go over here. Yeah, you go here. You go here. You go here. You there. That's that's what it is. Yes. And we're just doing the same thing with technology again. Don't put me in a damn group I don't belong in. Just because you're taking a best. Guess approach to saying I belong in this box, right? And you're going to funnel me this way and shovel me these ads that make no sense, or beyond ads, products, services, send me to the doctor I shouldn't be going to, whatever it might be. That's not me. No, we need to invert that that what that foundational piece of big data. Big data is making the choice for people rather than people making the choice for big data. Yes, and 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 like he says, that needs to change. She, you, you uh, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Strike three. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> Just say the author. Everyone, <laughs> I, I want to apologize. First of all, I want to apologize to Susan Ariel Aronson. <laughs> you apologized her three times. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this is horrific. This is funny. Okay, so big data analytics often requires a huge supply of anonymized personal data. The process 
<laughs> Dude, I bet it does. <laughs> you're still laughing, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> the process? I've learned my lesson, Alex. <laughs> Apparently not. No, I've done it two more times. <laughs> yeah. It's like a little kid. You know how the little kids are like, oh, we'll do it no, again. yeah. <laughs> and then 30 sure minutes later, they're like sneaking behind the couch. Yeah, what's the with the power <laughs> drill? <laughs> yeah, and a plug in. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's Let's always focus a focus here. Yeah, researchers clean and anonymize this data and then separate this data into groupings based on attributes such as behavior, preferences, income, race, and ethnicity. And who defines the attributes? Again, one dude right. or a couple of researchers. It could be a girl. <laughs> could be a girl. Yes. A dude or a gal. Yeah. But I say dude for either gender. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there are these small group of researchers are deciding what 10, 100 million people go into a specific bracket. Right. Does that seem wrong? No, yeah, I mean... Do you like going into a conversation and someone just defines you who you are, just blanket statements? No? No, no, no. I would <laughs> no, never, I nobody, would never. nobody likes that. That, that. That's annoying. Of course it's annoying. Why are we not annoyed with what's going on here? And then we just live in this this false reality constantly. We're in a, in a just this massive state of falseness. <laughs> and it's defined by the few to control the many. Well, like uh, she was talking about, we're, we're on the so, right track. Yeah. <laughs> My brain is, <laughs> the wheels are turning. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Wheel, but huh? she is talking about these sophisticated analytical techniques on artificial intelligence and machine learning. But what scares me is they're making assertions on these groups with bad data. Yeah. Think about that. No, I know that. So now, now we have millions of dollars being spent when we've grouped these people incorrectly. Yep. And now it, it, it's kind of like uh, the flat earthers. <laughs> it's like we're he, telling you this is how the earth is. Well, all the data from seven million and they say make otherwise. really great documentaries, like on YouTube and okay. stuff. If you look high at quality. them, I mean, they're high quality. But science has proven you over and over and over again. If you take a rocket fly <laughs> it's not gonna, off the planet it's not gonna smash into ice <laughs> is the moon round oh interesting is it a smaller planetary body yes well then how is ours possibly breaking flat when everything yeah. else is round yeah i mean, it, we, I mean just, just, instruments are measured <laughs> off of it the list and if you on. look up in the, if you look up into the night sky yeah do stars just shine in one direction <laughs> yeah exactly no they radiate yeah and then there's there's the, the rotation of the earth and then the circumference whenever you're looking like across the sea you can actually i mean no one would have made it anywhere in the ships if they would have based it off of being flat. Columbus. All the sextons and stuff. Yeah, Columbus right out. Yeah, the sextons wouldn't have worked. <laughs> yeah, no, none of the uh, none of that old school calculations because they had to do it old school way. That's so cool, the big brass thing. Yeah, the uh, Signal guy did that. The guy that owns Signal. Really? Yeah, he got a ship with a bunch <laughs> of teenagers on it. Going to no, didn't Cruise know. Island? Didn't know. <laughs> And he got old school mechanical things. These were like uh, kids that needed help or, or whatever. Oh, I like that. Yeah, but he's like, come to think of it, I'm surprised their parents let them go on the ship with me because it's like, we're going to go on a sailboat, a big sailboat. I have all mechanical instruments, no, no radar, no nothing. And we're just going to go on the open sea. <laughs> <laughs> and he's started signal, so. I'll stand on the shore and wave, <laughs> wave you guys Yeah, goodbye. exactly. No, he he was a uh, he he sailed since he was a little kid. Oh, cool. So he had that you know that that master's license or whatever they like master sailor type license or whatever. But that's still crazy to have to navigate heavy tonnage license. Yeah, I mean, so he has pictures on his Instagram of him with like out in the sea with that's cool. He's the sextons and all that stuff. So what know? does that uh, sort of celestial positioning have to do with? Well, I think it's important because these people will create a whole bias mm -hmm. off of a false narrative. Yeah. And then they will double down on it. And then next thing you know, there's millions and millions of dollars being spent, a doctrine being established. On a bias. On a bias, yes. Yeah. That's that's totally false. And that's what's happening and here they, when you group people. You deliver it back to the public. Yeah. And they're only getting seen things. And so what happens when you inundate someone with the same imagery, video, audio, all the time? It's naturally going to swim in that direction. And now these people are going to be like, oh... What we're doing is working. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's really not working. People don't have any other option because this is all you feed them. Right. Because you think it's the right thing. And they have no other choice because you've removed choice out of the matter. You've decided for them. Yeah, and it, it's funny. She uses an example of Microsoft 
365 that use the software to monitor their workers' productivity. Yeah, how many emails you're sending? By scoring them on participation in group chats and by the number of emails sent by employees. So if you would think about that. You're telling me I'm productive because I'm sending more emails? Yeah. It, that, you, because I'm group chatting more? That makes me productive? Think about that. I, that's so stupid. What, and so now. So I, now got a, I got a buddy of mine. <laughs> I'll talk about this as a real example. I got a buddy of mine, and uh, I'm over at his place. He's got the laptop open, working from home. And I'm like, "Why? What? What is this?" What? He's like, "I'm like, all these people are are on yellow on the away. You're the only person that's green." He's like, "He's like, yeah, keep it green, because the system monitors how many times we go away, in the chat system." And he said, "I always have my email up because because he's always watching how long I have the email up for." And so what I do is I just ping small stuff back and forth. So they're just. <laughs> they're creating the, the, the it's, everybody's going to find a way around it i of mean of course they yeah, do yeah they're gonna i mean there's they have those refresher pages you know that it'll refresh every five seconds or whatever what a stupid algorithm to define productivity but that is a, like a metaphor for everything else we're doing and i think she did a great job mm-hmm. you know highlighting that i like the sheriff office one in pasco county florida yeah um so they machine learning created uh this list of people of individuals that were going to be potential criminals and you could harass a system and it would monitor and constantly harass them because it'll force (laughs) force them into a position of like you're agitating them right so you're like wanting them to it's like a you remember the bait car yes yes it's it's like a digital bait car and that's what they're doing and then the irs takes a step further yeah, yeah, but we They're don't like, need... You, you we want don't... to dodge taxes? <laughs> How about we track you all the time wherever you're going? And we'll see all of your social media feeds. And location why does data. the IRS... Yes. Why oh, should don't a get me started, private bro. entity founded in the early 1900s, <sighs> a private entity, why should they be allowed to track me and then also look at my social media data just for some sort of assumption that I may be dodging taxes? They'll just say, well, everybody's dodging taxes. Mm-hmm. Let's track everybody. Yeah. I don't see, yeah, we, we, I don't want to. Did I ever tell the IRS it was okay to do something like that? I don't want to get into that I whole uh, mess because those, and that. that's a, uh, uh, put your accent out when you say IRS. IRS. <laughs> Did you I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> see, IRS. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yes. But this is the crazy part. Whenever we use big data to create big government, I'm out. So, I mean, what? If when big data becomes big brother, yes, we got to nix that. Yeah, we got to nix Bye. that. Bye. Yeah, we're gonna lop that down with our so our sovereign sword of data freedom. We're gonna cut it down. Our data champions are gonna be like, no, that model does not work like that. You're gonna come to Tartle, and we're gonna tell you who we are. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I like the uh, the one that she talks about. Not just Cambridge Atlantica, but the athletic network Strava. Um, oh, that released NATO. a global heat map of user activity. Don't you remember that? And then, the yeah, then, yeah. And People then were like, showed... what is this up here? Oh, there's a training base in the Arctic? Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> and it shows all the guys it's like a... going for jogs. And it has all the internal parts of the building. Yeah, yeah, the NATO military personnel. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, so th- these things that uh, the algorithm design made it less likely to refer black people than white people who are equally sick to programs. That aim to approve care for patients with complex medical needs. Because mm-hmm. it's machine learning. So it, it's... Who's the freaking racist that put that algorithm together? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, why, can't, why is it... If you have a complex medical need, why is the algorithm defining who gets the complex medical need first? Why can't me saying, there's a complex issue going on internally within my body. I need to, I need to go see a doctor. Yes. Why are you telling me who and when I should go see them? This yeah. is complex enough for me. This is the same I'm seeing right now where Tardo could have helped dramatically with uh, the vaccine rollout. Yeah. Um, this is a prime example of where you need to speak to the people. Yeah. Um, and then if if we would have known, if we would have had their data packet, their health records data packet. And Behaviors, we were, and, jobs. And, and then ask them you know, direct questions to qualify for them, then we could have made a proper list. In 24 hours. Yeah, of of what with every American of how, or whatever country you're in. Whoever wants a vaccine. Yeah, uh, to get this vaccine ruled out to the right people at the right time. Because now they're like, 
there's this big controversy. You know, Hollywood people are getting it, and then you know, um, super healthy people are I getting it. I am so it tired and, of hearing that crap. Yeah, like I'm I'm fed up with just people pointing fingers and blaming all the stuff. We have the tool available to cut all that out. What are you going to have to talk about when you can't complain anymore? I don't know now because everybody's in 2020. Everybody gets so conditioned to being pissed off all the time. All the time. I'm, I'm, yeah. and, and, and now you're going to have be. the president's going to be in. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to be same as it always is. It, what, I always tell people this. Your day-to-day life, every day. I, I tell people this all the time. I, I was saying this in 2020 constantly. Alex, whether Trump gets into office or Biden gets into office, your day-to-day life, every day, will it change? No, no, <laughs> and, I don't care. And, I want to be pissed off. And, and if you're, and if you're, if you're that into it to the point to where you let it consume, go get a job in politics and get your emotions. Yeah. Either go get a job in politics and, and change the world or join number Tartle. two, your priorities are all wrong. <laughs> priorities are wrong. Or you can join Tartle and just talk about it through there. Yes, exactly. Oh, get paid to be yeah. upset. Yeah. Get paid to be upset, but. <laughs> It's it's your responsibility, hundred percent. I don't I don't care who the puppet is. <laughs> oh man, puppet. That's a good word. Yeah, I don't care who the puppet is on on whatever country I live in. Yeah. Um. That those. The, you know, we've talked Luxembourg about Luxembourg or Guadalajara, in yeah. Mexico, <laughs> or Melbourne, or, or Cebu in the Philippines. Cebu in the Philippines. I don't care. Maybe Kazakhstan. Or, or maybe Pyongyang in <laughs> yeah. North Korea. Uh, hey. <laughs> Is it, do I not pay taxes there? Perfect. <laughs> I can get, well, no, I don't have any hair. You pay more I need than that, a tax. Because all the guys have to get the same. Yeah. Kim you would have worked there. Yeah. You got to get the mm, haircut. You could, uh, they'd have a life tax on you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Welcome probably, to North yeah. Korea. Here's your life tax. <laughs> yeah. And you have, uh, you're a CMO of a tech company. That's not going to work here, buddy. No, that's not going to work. You speak English? Not going to work. That's also not We have work. all these things that we teach our children with these big missiles. <laughs> yeah. They have missiles in the school, like, and that's they ridiculous. do plays on. It's empty. Don't they only have one nuclear warhead? Literally just one? Yeah. It's, it's They've silly. only required the resources for one yeah, it reminds me of uh, uh, North Korea. Reminds me of the uh, the Wizard of Oz, the guy behind. It's just a, a silly guy behind City? the curtain. Yeah, yeah. It's like all seems all scary, and then you look, and it's it's just a little. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hello. Yeah, I created. Welcome all this. to the Emerald City. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. It's it's so funny, but those people are living in a whole different matrix. Yeah, I mean they they are all in. It's a matrix. I mean, from from their, uh, they have to watch commercials in their planes when they I fly. Think, I don't think they have a choice. They ha- they have no choice. Yeah, but but you know who does have a choice? Here we go. This is what I want to talk about: data and choice. All the other hundred eighty plus countries across the globe, and those individuals that have access to the internet can all join Tartle and have a choice. They can have a choice in the big data algorithms. They can have a choice in what they want their future to look like. They can have a choice in how they choose. To define themselves. Yeah, I, I, I do want to end in this, and, and you can speak to this. Um, she mentioned something about the Security and Exchange Commission should ask all publicly traded companies to disclose when and how they use data analytics to make decisions that affect their customers' human rights, such as access to credit, education, health care. I, I, so here, here's maybe this is my libertarian viewpoint or whatever, but whenever I'm saying, okay, now I'm going to ask Security Exchange, why can't, why can't we as consumers go to this company and demand that? And shareholders should demand that. Why does we don't need to get the government involved. The government doesn't need to involve. We need to just work with the people that we're working with. Yes. Why do we need to have a third party come in and define what needs to go on? Why can't we as people do that? And don't support a company that's nefarious. This is We're just being Socratic here. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's very, very simple. Support yourself. Yes. And support some global causes, the big seven. Thank you very much.